Butkin Brewery Bohemia Craft Lager. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. This is from the Buttcum Brewery. I'm going to try and not make any comment or jokes about the name of this brewery, but I cannot promise anything. So there you go. There's the disclaimer. This is a bottle of their Bohemia Craft Lager. Now, I want to have a little chat about lagers, specifically lagers that are brewed in the UK. Now, I've done quite a few reviews of lagers that have been brewed in the UK and the general synopsis is it's pretty disappointing. Now there's a couple of exceptions I will say, uh, two of them are the, are, to the, are the exception to the rule and that is the Sam Smith's Organic Lager, it's a superb lager. I know that they've had a coll collaboration in the past with Iinga so they may have got a lot of the know-how from them. But the other one is also from Yorkshire, and that's the C84 Yorkshire Lager, which was really good. I was really impressed by that. It had a, a unique taste. But do you know what I liked about that? It wasn't trying to be something that it wasn't. Now, if you take, for example, another brewery in that locality, the Salt Air Brewery, they brewed a Hellas, and they made big overtures as to how it was like a Bavarian Hellas-style beer, etc., etc. And it tasted nothing of the salt. It tasted like a bang average macro-brewed lager. The other night, I'd done a review, and it's, I don't know what all of this is all going to go up in. The Camden Hells review will probably be up before this one. But I tried that, and it was a revisiting one because I tried it about a year ago, and it wasn't too bad. But I hadn't tried the amount of German beers that I'd tried up to now and I revisited the Camden Hell stuff and a lot's gone on since then Obviously, they've been taken over and they brew a lot of beer on a bigger scale than they were brewing it and they still give the general gump on the side about the the big noble hop cap or well not noble hops but there's two German hops in that Hercules and Perla I'm talking about the Camden Hells now and they've got Pilsen malt in there in the cans, I don't know whether it's the same, but a year ago they were putting Munich malts in there as well. That's not on there anymore. So I'm wondering whether the recipe has changed. That's why, in my opinion, it didn't taste great at all. In fact, I was really disappointed with it. And the fact that they're charging a lot of money for it, it that irked me. But what really irked me about this was the fact that they said, oh, you know, they listed all these German ingredients that you would generally find in a decent Hellas and then they said on the back um, of the can of the bottle sorry they said oh, we go over to Bamberg every year and we check out what's around and we try and imitate it and I just thought that's bollocks now you can have German ingredients in there yes and th they made a big point about saying they used Bavarian lager malt yeah they may well have done they used Pilsner malt in there yeah it's not unheard of to use that in a German lager the Munich malt, I don't know where that happens, you know, in, in that beer, but all I know is it was, on the, it was on the can when I tried it first, and now it isn't. Then you had the Perla and the Hercules hops, and to be honest, it's a perfect example of where you can use similar or the same ingredients, but if you've got people that just haven't got the know-how brewing, it doesn't taste the same and it doesn't taste authentic. That is a classic example of it. In Germany, and specifically in Bavaria, and I'm going to compare it with Bavaria because they were the ones that made the mention of it, and they were making a big thing, thing about going over to Bamberg, etc. They just didn't get it right at all. And that's the difference between a proper brewmaster who brews on a big scale. I mean, some of the ones in Munich are 
they brew on a massive scale. But there's other breweries in Bamberg as well, in Franconia as well, and they're brewing on beers on a scale, I would say, as, as big as Camden House, and it's, it's just light years ahead. So my point is that I'm trying to make, in a roundabout way, generally, this country doesn't really do lager well. Hence the reason why stuff like Stella, Artois, Budweiser, Fosters, etc., is popular. And it's a real shame because if people had tasted real beer or a brewer over here, I know the two I just mentioned, but if there were some more brewers that really pulled out all the stops and really tried to brew a decent lager on the on a par with some of the German stuff, and I'm quite hard to please when it comes to this type of thing. And to be honest, I really don't think this is going to be a good one. And I shouldn't really be doing that because I should really be judging beer on its own merits. But I, I look at this and it leaves me a little bit cold, to be honest. Now, Buckham Brewing, I've had a couple of their beers on the channel and I think they've been okay. Nothing special as far as I can remember. But they're a bit of a strange brewery. They do traditional stuff and they own pubs as well. But they've got a craft beer range. Now... Again, that sort of irks me a little bit. I've, you know, you, people may think I have a problem with craft beer. I do not have a problem with craft beer. I don't review much on the channel anymore. I've got two in there to review. So just to redress the balance, I will review them. But as a rule, I generally don't review craft beer for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's fucking expensive and I don't get beer given to me for nothing. Even though them two craft beers were given to me as an anniversary present from my mate Julian. Cheers for that, mate. But the... The, the real thing about it is with craft beer a lot of it ain't great and when I see a company that do the traditional stuff but then they're sort of branching out trying to make themselves out to be craft lager or craft beer brewers I think that's just a pure marketing hype and it doesn't impress me much as Shania Twain would say but the proof should really be in the tasting, so I'm going to park that thought there, and if it ain't great, then you're going to get both barrels. But I don't have a problem with Buckham Brewing, because they do brew some good beer. Traditional beer, I mean, they, you know, they do some good bitters and stuff like that. So, and they're based in Bristol, they're a company that's been around for 40-odd years, over 40 years, so they sort of know what they're doing. Obviously, if you've got 150 pubs, you know what you're doing, so crack on. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get this beer checked out. Okay, this is called Bohemia Craft Lager. Now, if I see the word Bohemia, I'm thinking Czech Pilsner, because obviously Bohemia is a region in the Czech Republic. Originally, I think it was German and I think it's in the region of the Sudetenland. Now, don't quote me on that, but or what was the Sudetenland? I'm going back to me World War II and World War I history now, but it was at one point, there was a lot of ethnic Germans there, so there was a lot of German influence around that area. Bohemia is renowned for its Pilsner-style beers, and that's what's putting me in mind that this is a Pilsner. However, if you read on the back, now here, here's the spiel on the back. These are craft beers and, the, sorry, start that again. There are craft beers and then there's Bohemia craft beer. Yeah, okay. Brewed for the beatniks, created against convention, made by Mavericks. Oh, this fucking bullshit. A bold, crisp and refreshing lager with a style of its own. Interesting. A style of its own, right, okay. Prize noble hops provide distinct spicy, earthy and floral notes with a smooth bitterness. Born to stand out, we are the alternative. Drink it in. Mm. Okay, so there, there's no brew sheet on there, so I can't give you any indication as to what they've got in here, but if they're saying noble hops, I'm assuming they're gonna mean one of the four noble hops, which is either Sartz, Tetnang, Spalt, or Halatau. But that's about it, really. It's saying it contains malted barley and wheat. Mm. Why would you put wheat in a lager? Now, they haven't gone full Camden and saying, you know, trying to big up their German credentials or their German imitation credentials, but they've put wheat in it, which is an unusual ingredient for lager, in my opinion. But 
it sounds like I'm being a little bit too harsh on this, but I'm really, I'm really skeptical about beers like this. And I saw this in, where did I see this? Was it in Morrison's or was it in Aldi? I can't remember, but it came from a supermarket anyway. Um, it's 4.7% and it's 330 mil. There's the cap. Let me get out of the way. There's the cap. There is the label. I assume that's somewhere in Bristol, that roadmap. Let's get it open. Let's see what's going on. Right. Get it into ye olde glass. I think this was Aldi that this came from. Mm, I can smell it from here. It's cereally and grainy on the initial opening. Yeah, very grainy. There's a lemon citrus to it. And not much else. Mm. It smells okay, the aromas aren't big. There's no nasties in there yet. Certainly not on the aroma. There's a little haze to it as well. Maybe you can see that or not. But there is definitely a haze. If you can see my hand through the back, you'll get an indication of what it's like. Hmm. Not a great deal. Let's get it down the hatch and see what gives. Bottoms up. That's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And first mouthful, this is definitely better than the Camden Hills. Dive in again, see what's going on. I can definitely get some of them hoppy notes <clears throat> on the finish. Fucking hell, that is really. I think that's gone down the wrong hole. Let me have another mouthful, clear my throat. Mm. Yeah, that's not bad actually. Now the Camden Hells is supposedly a mix between a Hellas and a Pilsner. <clears throat> it's a hybrid beer, if you like. That's more in keeping with, with what I would think would be a mix between a Hellas and a Pilsner. There's some nice bitter notes on the finish on that. And I'm wondering whether that's Sart Tops they've put, it, put in there. Because it is, I was a bit harsh at the beginning, but where they mentioned Bohemia, they have captured some of the characteristics of a Belgian, of a Belgian, <laughs> of a Belgian, of a Czech Pilsner. There's some nice bitter notes on the finish on there. Now they make no mention of it, of being a Pilsner, but there's noble hop character on this, and there's bitter notes on the finish. It's, it's more bitter than it is sweet, but there is, <clears throat> there is a little malty character on this, but, I think this is all about the hops. When they say they've got the noble hop, what is it, is it, uh, where is it? What are they saying exactly? Prized noble hops provide distinct spicy, earthy and floral notes. It's definitely spicy. 
and that's on the finish. It's like a spicy bitterness, which is quite nice. I like that. Some subtle, and I mean, I don't mean subtle floral notes, but it's just okay. Now, that might sound harsh, but you have to take into consideration what it's up against and what it's competing with. Yes, it's better than macro brewed beer. That's a given. It smells quite nice. There's no nasties on the aroma. There's no real nasties on the taste either. But I just think the balance is a little bit skewed towards the noble hops. And whereas that's not bad, German beers, and this is what I'm going to compare it to, and well, not so much Czech beers. Czech beers have got the bitterness going on, but you do get some nice malty notes initially on the, on the first mouthful of a Czech Pilsner. And then you get the bitter finish. All I'm getting with this is the bitter finish. I'm not getting any nice malty notes, not really. It just goes straight to, straight to a bitter finish. It's, it's okay. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. And it's probably not brewed on, on as big a scale as the, the Camden stuff, but it still ain't as good as the the Yorkshire, the C84 stuff, or even the Sam Smith stuff, but I have tasted worse, I will say that. This, this ain't the best, but it ain't the worst either. So what is the verdict on Butcombe Brewing Bohemia Craft Lager? Well, I didn't have high hopes for it. And it did, <clears throat> it did surprise me slightly because there was quite a bit of the noble hop character on the finish, which I liked. But it just went straight to that. There was no, there was no malt on the palate, which is usually what you'd expect with, as I say, some Czech Pilsners or even the German Pilsners as well. Yeah, you do get a dry finish, you do get a bitter finish. And to be honest, that's doing a pretty good job of coming across as a, you know, one of them dry, bitter, North German Pilsners, it, it, it is doing that. But I'm not getting the nice malt at the start. There's some flavour on there, it's not bad, and the hops really are the saving grace on this. However, I'd be hard pushed to buy this again. So, on that strength, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Um, am I going to recommend it? I, well, and it's a shame. Again, another British brewer, or English brewer, I should say, just fall short of brewing a decent lager. Will there be a decent English brewer one day that can brew a lager that will blow me away? So far, the only two that have really done that for me are Sam Smith's and the C84 brewery with their Yorkshire lager. Everything else just, it just doesn't do it for me, unfortunately. And this is another one. But there you go. And remember, beer is working class champagne.